Good evening and welcome to Medicine Hat Votes. Albertans have been voting all day, and here in our city, a record high 36 candidates have been campaigning since January, in some cases, for your vote. Some since January 1st, as new rules came into place this year. According to electronic records from the city going back to the 1980s, only three elections topped 20 candidates, the most recent being 2001. Advanced poll numbers this year were over 5,000 people, a number the city called today huge. Last election, 1,700 people cast ballots in advance polls. This has set the stage for what looks to be a very interesting evening. Over the next two hours, we will be bringing you team coverage focused on results, reaction, and analysis. It's my pleasure to be your host. Joining me in just a bit will be our special guest, Lisa Kowalchuk from the Medicine Hat and District Chamber of Commerce. Scott Roblin is manning the results desk for us this evening. Darren Rathwell is at the Mez, where Ted Clugston and several other candidates are watching the results tonight. Hello to you all. Other candidates are gathering at Earl's, and Tiffany Goodwin will be there gathering reaction. And Tegan Rasha is here in the media center following the conversation on social media. She will also be chatting with some of the candidates over Zoom tonight as well. There are five candidates vying for the chance to lead our city for the next four years. Incumbent Ted Clugston is hoping to be re-elected for a third term. He's being challenged by Lindsay Clark, who took an unpaid leave from her job in the city solicitor department. Alan Rose has a background in oil and gas, as well as small business ownership. Tony Leahy is a licensed realtor, and Michael Starner is the youngest candidate at just 21 years old. Of the eight seats up for grabs on council, we know four will be filled by new faces. Julie Friesen, Jamie McIntosh, and Chris Samraj all decided not to seek re-election. And sadly, incumbent councillor Jim Turner, who was seeking re-election, passed away unexpectedly last month. This year's candidates come from a wide range of backgrounds. Seven are women. Professional backgrounds include teacher, business owner, and realtor. Two of the candidates are retired police officers, while another is a retired member of the Medicine Hat Fire Department. Many of the candidates have been active members of the community, volunteering their time and support to a number of different initiatives and causes. Two of the candidates on the ballot ran in the last municipal election. Voters also weighed in to this election on two referendum questions. The first one asked, should Section 36.2 of the Constitution Act 1982, Parliament, and the Government of Canada's commitment to the principle of making equalization payments be removed from the Constitution? That's the first referendum question. The second question focuses on the issue of time change. Voters were asked, do you want to adopt year-round daylight saving time, which is summer hours, eliminating the need to change our clocks twice a year? Now, we're not hoping you're gonna sit there just and watch us tonight. We want you to join the conversation and share your thoughts as the next two hours unfold. On Twitter, use the hashtag MHVotes. You can also comment on our Chat TV Facebook page. Look for Chat TV Medicine Hats. Before we bring in our special guest, we'd like to spend some time to remember Councillor Jim Turner. Mr. Turner passed away on September 21st. He wasn't afraid to share his opinions, and he devoted countless hours to serving our community. Darren Rathwell takes a look back and talks to some people who knew him best. Jim Turner, a city councillor, an avid businessman, and as a fellow politician says, a significant contributor to the city of Medicine Hat. Oh, 100%. Jim was all about the city and making the city better. Flags at all city facilities were lowered to half-mast on Wednesday in honour of Turner. Colleagues and friends like Brian Varga are trying to come to terms with a sudden loss. Last time we saw Jim was two weeks ago at the council meeting and everything seemed fine at that time. He was his usual self, uh, being stubborn and saying his viewpoint and, and being joking of in behind the scenes. I don't know if that really matters what happened because uh, he's gone now, right? And that's, that's the hard part. Mayor Ted Clugston believes Turner died from a heart attack, saying that Turner suffered a heart attack eight years ago and was in hospital for three months. But it led to a closer relationship between the two politicians. I convinced him to start walking, and we used to challenge each other, uh, you know, with steps, who could do 10,000 steps a day. Varga says business was a big part of Turner's life. He managed the old IGA food store in the Southview Mall. And Varga says when it comes to city initiatives, Turner was firm in his beliefs. The waterfront was a big deal. We, we talk about it all the time, and he's a big guy with economic development and, and helping out the business community. As a counselor, he was hard-nosed and tough and, and hard on situations and, and set his viewpoint, and that's just the way Jim was, right? 
Plyston says the loss of his friend is devastating, noting Turner devoted his time to serving others for the betterment of our community. When he used to own IGA Sobeys, he, uh, he used to sleep on the roof of the building uh, to help raise money, and I think he even got really sick one time you know, with pneumonia, and he was always raising money when he was with the food bank. The Medicine Ad Food Bank is remembering its former executive director as an avid supporter. The agency says it hopes to continue to make Turner proud of the work they do. Jim Turner leaving behind friends, family, and colleagues to grieve. Darren Rathwell, Chat News. I'm sure this is a tough night for the entire Turner family, so our best wishes and condolences go to all of them. Coming up here on Medicine Hat Votes, election 2021, our guest joins me here in studio and we check in with one of our reporters who's with one of the candidates tonight. There's much more to come right after this break here on Chat TV. Welcome to Medicine Hat Votes. Welcome back to election 2021 here on Chat Television. It's going to be a busy night. We're here with you until at least 10 o'clock tonight. And let's get rolling right now down to the mez we go with our reporter Darren Rathwell, who is standing with the incumbent mayoral candidate Ted Clugston. Gentlemen. I understand about 50 people here gathered for a vocal high energy affair, showing a solidarity, if you will, for the incumbent in the mayor race in Medicine Hat, Ted Clugston, who joins us now. Ted? How are you feeling tonight? Well, I'm thinking this is maybe one of my tightest races that I've been in. Of course, uh, COVID has been very controversial and is um, a very people have very strong opinions on either side. And so I think some people, you know, there's obviously those that are disappointed with, with my leadership during COVID and those that think that I've done a great job. And uh, we'll see what, how, if, I mean, obviously this is a municipal election and shouldn't be about COVID, but it will be. Okay. Okay. A lot of people I, I heard from today we're saying it's time for a change, that they were tired of an old boys club kind of thing. What is your thought about that? Every election I've been through, it's been time for a change, old boys club, uh, transparency, accountability. Those uh, themes are uh, perennial <laughs> and um, frankly a little unimaginative, to tell you the truth. So um, if elected, what's your first thought? What's your first priority? Well, I will be getting back to root, uh, work. Um, so the, the first job of the mayor with a new council is to assign committees. So you go through, you're looking because you don't know who your council is going to be. The residents have chosen that for you. And then you look at their experience and then you say, who's going to be on police commission? Who's going to be on energy committee? Who's going to be on corporate services? And that, that is one of the most challenging parts of, of a new mayor is making sure that you get those committees uh, set up properly. Okay. All right. Well, we'll be in touch again with uh, the incumbent Ted Clugston later in the evening. But for now, we'll throw back to you in the studio. Thanks. Thank you, Darren. Thank you, Ted. Joining me now to help break down the results of our evening is our special guest, Lisa Kowalchuk. Lisa is the executive director of the Medicine Hat and District Chamber of Commerce. She is passionate about our community and seeing growth and prosperity within our region. Lisa, thank you very much for being here tonight. Thanks for having me, Dan. There's a record number of candidates who ran this time round, one of the largest numbers ever. Well, what do you think was the reason that so many people decided to jump into this race, both for mayor and for councillors? Well, I think what they've seen in the last, um, really, the last two years, and particularly with COVID, has spurred a lot of conversation within the community. I think we've seen a lot of polarization within the community and a lot of people stepping forward. Um, I think a lot of the comments that we've heard are, are issues around economic development and the waterfront district and growth, uh, accountability and transparency, all of these kind of uh, key words that you're hearing come up over and over and over again in yeah. the election. And so we're seeing candidates jump on some of those topics as their platform and, and what they want to see change. And I think they see it as an opportunity to put their name forward and, and to see what they can do in the next four year term. This has been a long election for some people since the rules changed this year and now they could, as of January 1st, put their name in. So we've had a couple of mayoral candidates and a couple of councillors who have been literally going 
all year with this. Ted Clugston said this morning he's looking forward to it being over. Uh, do you think that's the common consensus amongst everybody who's running that they're looking forward to tomorrow? Oh, absolutely. This has been a long haul and this has certainly been a long election period for all of the candidates, particularly those that put their name in early. Mm -hmm. And of course, Mayor Clugston had put his name in at the State of the City address yeah. and, and declared at, at that time. And so I think a lot of people are looking forward to the next phase, the next chapter, so whether they, they get in and are elected and, and start um, their duties at the November 1st organizational meeting, yeah. or uh, if they have the opportunity to, to move on to you know whatever it is that's occupying their, their day-to-day lives. And I do hope for all candidates, when you're that passionate about the city, that they'll take the opportunity, regardless win or lose, to get involved in community, to yeah. become more aware of some of the priority issues, the committees, the different um, organizations organizations, amazing organizations that we have in this community. We've heard the word transparency a lot during this election from the candidates mainly. With the businesses that you talk to on a day-to-day -day basis, are they also talking about transparency? I think when we hear the words transparency and accountability, what that really comes down to is communication okay. and how we're communicating to the public. Um, obviously, we know that there's lots of things that do have to be discussed in camera. Okay. Uh, there's actually guidelines and regulations around what can and cannot be disclosed in, in public or in private. We also know that any decisions that are made do have to be public motions in council. I think the challenge is that there isn't uh, that communication that with the community, whether business community or the community at large, in terms of um, some of those discussions. And so it's really evaluating. I think one of the important things for the next council will need to be determining how they communicate to the community and, and what some of the initiatives are that they're looking at um, with, you know, obviously knowing what's confidential, what mm -hmm. isn't, um, but having that effective you know, relay of information, whether that's through social media, the website, um, through chat news, mm -hmm. you know, and getting the message out there into the community in terms of what the priorities are, what the strategic plans are, and what exactly they are doing to move those plans and priorities forward. So there's, there is a healthy balance, I think, that needs to be struck. And so when we talk about transparency and accountability, it's it's really about how we're communicating yeah. those policies, plans, priorities, and engaging the community. But it is a two-way street, because of course our community needs to engage in those processes yeah. and become informed about what's happening within our city. Okay, thank you very much. Good to have you here. Much more to talk about tonight. Much, much, much more. All right, why don't we head down to Earl's? That's where we find our Tiffany Goodween tonight. Tiffany has a guest, and here she is now. Yes, people are eating, drinking, laughing with family, friends and supporters. There are a number of candidates here, including Brad Bruzy and Justin Wright. Both tell me that they aren't nervous at all. In fact, they feel a sense of relief, but there are still some nerves in the air. I was just speaking to Kelly Allard and she's very nervous as to who will get elected. Back to you. Tiffany Goodwin at Earl's tonight. Tiffany, thank you very much. Some of the results are coming in, and whenever results roll in this evening, we're going to go to my on-air partner, my colleague, my friend, Mr. Scott Roblin, is sitting at the big desk tonight. Scott, have they declared a winner in the mayoral campaign yet? Well, I think it's still a little early for that, Dan, but we are getting the initial results in in terms of mayoral and uh, council candidates here in Medicine Hat. And right now it's a two horse race in terms of the mayoral race. Lindsay Clark is leading 211 votes to Ted Clugston's 115. Again, still very early, but that is the initial reports that we have coming in from the city of Medicine Hat. As for Councillors, uh, big thing that's being noticed right now is a lot of incumbents in that top eight. Uh, still, again, very early. Robert Dumanowski with 188 is leading, followed by Andy McGrogan, the former Medicine Hat Police Chief, 160. Darren Hirsch, Phil Turnbull, Allison Knodel, and Brian Varga are your top six, along with Ramona Robbins and Allison Van Dyke, followed closely uh, by Shyla Sharps, Cassie Heider, and Jim Black, who are somewhere in the range of about 10 to 25 votes behind that first group of eight. So still extremely early, but that is where we're sitting uh, within about the first 15, 20 minutes of the campaign tonight. All right, Scott Robin with the early results. Scott, thank you very much. Let's go back to Lisa Kowalczyk. 
How is this playing out in the early? It sounds pretty much like it's going the way that I guess we all thought it would so far. Well, and I think really it's been a, a toss-up in terms of what the results would be of, of this election with the number of candidates that we have. I mm. think there's been a lot of talk in the community that we'd see kind of a race between uh, Mayor Clugston and Lindsay Clark. And so I, my hope is, out of all of this, we're actually going to see a higher, higher voter turnout in its entirety. Yeah. So we've had lower voter turnouts in 2017 and going back to 2013. And with this many candidates and this much interest in this year's election, I really hope that we can bump those numbers up uh, over that 50% mark or, or yeah. higher, um, you know, in terms of that overall voter count and where they're placing their priorities and which council members or candidates they're voting for. It was a little bit surprising to hear that there was only 1,700 advance votes back in the last election and there was over 5,000 this year which the city itself referred to as huge. Does this number surprise you, the fact that there's 5,000 people who went out early making sure they got their vote in? No, that doesn't surprise me at all. Actually, I would I would have anticipated it possibly even higher and okay. particularly because we're, we're still in a pandemic. There's still concern over um, COVID and, and people wanting to get out early and not have to worry about the rush on the on you know election day. And so I don't think that number is surprising. Um, again, we'll see how many people have come out to vote today and, and right up until eight o'clock this evening and, and see what those numbers play out in terms of the candidates. Okay, oh, I can't wait to see those final numbers. All right, Lisa Kowalczyk, I'm Dan Reinish. Thank you for being with us. We'll look at the social media side of this campaign when we come back here on Medicine Hat Votes. This is Campaign 2021 on Chat Television. Social media and the internet has been a big focus this campaign. For those of you that are watching right now on chatnewstoday.ca, thank you for streaming this program. Many candidates have been tweeting and using Facebook as a way to connect with voters while residents have been sharing their thoughts and views. Tegan Rash is following the conversation online for us tonight and is here with me now. So Tegan, what are you seeing? What are people saying right now? Dan, on all social media platforms, there have been a few common themes. First, candidates and hatters are encouraging everyone to vote. Another major theme, one we heard about in person and over social media, is change. At least half of Medicine Hat's council will be new. On Facebook, one voter said, I wouldn't be surprised if every face on council is new. Another saying they're simply voting for change. Others say they're looking forward to seeing more women on council. But with so many candidates running, some voters say it took them days to look through everyone's platform just to decide who they're going to vote for. One of the main topics across Facebook and Twitter is getting rid of the old boys club. But on incumbent mayor Ted Clugson's Facebook page, voters are pleased with the results him and council have done over the years. Dan? All right, Tegan Rasha, if you would like to comment on something that's going on, use the hashtag MHVotes on Twitter. And that's where you can let us know what you're thinking. You can also head to our Facebook page. Just look for Chat TV Medicine Hat on Facebook and give us a thought or two if you are looking at something otherwise. All right. Let's head now back to the Mez. That's where we find our Darren Rathwell, who is with Councillor Candidate Andy McGrogan. That's right. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Coming back to us, Dan. Uh, as you mentioned, we're here with uh, former police chief McGrogan. And uh, the latest polling results showing you uh, are making a, a sizable showing in, in the ranks. How, what, what are your thoughts about that? Well, I'm pretty excited. Uh, I was, you know, it's still very early, as you know, in the process. But, uh, you know, it's I just hope the, the Hatters put their trust in me and uh, they give me an opportunity to, uh, to help govern the city. Okay, okay. Um, if you do become elected, what's your uh, your first thought in, in office? My first thought? Mm -hmm. Just, you know, really, I just want to get in and, and be part of a, a lot of the big decisions that we're being faced with, the recreational master plan, the utility issues, uh, just general leadership and the city decision making. Uh, I think I'm well poised to help out in that area. I, I look forward to working with uh, the rest of council and and uh, doing what I can to serve the citizens of Medicine Hat. Okay. You've mentioned that in the past, in your position as uh, police chief, 
that put you in a position to understand the inner workings of the yeah. city hall and you feel that that's going to help further and what can you give me an example of how that might work well for instance i you know i had i'm very familiar with the budgeting process i ran a 24 million dollar budget so i'm familiar with the process and you know all the strategic planning that went into it the long-term planning the effects of budgeting on the taxpayer so i think i've got a real uh, a, a good knowledge base there, although there's a lot more zeros behind the whole city picture. I'm really looking forward to uh, learning more about the rest of the city services and, and seeing how I can help out there. Okay. Uh, one other question for you. And we're at the Mez. We're here for uh, uh, the mayor incumbent, Ted Clugston's gathering. Uh, why did you decide to uh, come to this event? Because he invited me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate your time and uh, good luck in tonight's race. Thank you. Take care. Council candidate Andy McGrogan speaking with us tonight. Back to you, Dan. And to the point as always, thank you very much, Darren. Thank you very much, Mr. McGrogan. Lisa Kowalczyk, I, I, I have to refer to him as Mr. McGrogan, but we both know the man is Andy. He's worked in the city, in our city, for so many years. Uh, I admit I was very happy to hear that he was going to run for councillor, but I thought he would run for mayor. Uh, how do you think his campaign has gone Has gone over? Well, I think Andy is, is somebody that just really resonates with people in Medicine Hat. He's very well known. There's, you know, looking at the top 10 coming up from, from the candidates, there is a lot of name recognition mm -hmm. there. So certainly that, that plays into the election. But in terms of Andy, I think he's, you know, he's run a very good campaign. He was very upfront in this in the sense that mm -hmm. he wasn't accepting any any money, any you know, anything. It was a self funded campaign yeah. and he wanted to run on on his own merits and so you have to give the guy credit for, for that and running a really clean campaign. I think that anybody that makes a decision to run for public office deserves a pat on the back and a thank you because oh. my father was in the military for twenty six years and I mean when you're serving your community, your country and all of those things, you you're giving up things. You're giving up your time. You're giving up in, in Andy's case, in Mr. McGrogan's case, you're giving up money. Uh, there's all of these people that are running this year, though. Do you think some people went in with good intentions, but in the back of their mind maybe knew they weren't going to be one of the final eight? Well, I, I would hope that anybody who puts their name forward doesn't go in thinking that they might lose an election. Okay. You know, you, you run for an election sure. or at any level of government. You run with to the, win, but sometimes <laughs> you know. There, there are absolutely, with that many candidates, you know that obviously not everybody is going to have a seat on council. Right. Um, I think a lot of people don't fully comprehend or are aware of the level of service that an elected position takes. And mm -hmm. I always give credit for anybody who runs for office, whether municipal, provincial, or federal, because it is a tireless job and mm -hmm. it is an act of, of servanthood and public service. Uh, oftentimes it's a thankless job. It is. You know, you, as in any leadership position, you know, you, you certainly are responsible. When things go well, you want to give away the credit to those who, who deserve that mm -hmm. credit and who have made that happen. But when things go wrong, you know, you also have to accept responsibility. So lots of times it's it's a very challenging position. Um, it's often, like I said, a thankless position and, and there's a lot of hard knocks. And I think now in the world of social media, it's even harder mm -hmm. um, to be in a position, whether as a candidate or an elected representative. Yeah. And so we have to pause and give thanks to every single person who actually has the courage to put their name forward for a leadership position. And we also have to do our due diligence as, as leaders within the community and different organizations to provide them resources, education, to help bring them up to speed once they are elected. Well, and it wasn't that long ago that if you needed to hear feedback from somebody on the streets of Medicine Hat, you'd have to run into them. But the, the council and the current mayor have to hear it everywhere. And Mr. Clugston will tell you that he answers his phone, he talks to people, he doesn't run from most people, and he has to listen to what they're saying. And this has been a tough 20 months, I would think, for anybody who goes into the City Hall. Oh, for sure. Coming into an election it, during a pandemic is, is that much more difficult because of the polarization within the community, heightened awareness of, of challenges, emotion. There's a lot of big decisions in front of council as well. Um, when you look at some of the decisions that have have been required and had to have been made, um, all falling back on, of course, our municipal development 
plan and the intermunicipal collaboration framework within our county yeah. and the town uh, and how all of those work together but once a municipal development plan is passed then the hard work begins yeah. because all of the different bylaws and policies stem from that and typically when we, when we look at a provincial or federal election you know, a lot of those tough decisions are actually made at the beginning yeah. of their term, yeah. so that hopefully by the time that the next election rolls around, people have kind of forgotten or softened. Um, but that's not the case in our yeah. municipal election. It's a thankless job, but unless we break the news tomorrow that somebody was made to run, they all made the choice to do it. We'll be right back with more here on Medicine Hat Votes. I'm Dan Reinish. <laughs> Welcome back to our live election night coverage here on Chat Television. I'm Dan Reinish. If you'd like to be part of the conversation, head to Twitter and use the hashtag MHVotes. Yes, Medicine Hat is voting. The polls have been closed for about 23 minutes. We'll hear more about the polls in just a moment. But back we go now to Earl's. Our Are we going to Scott right now? Live television, fake Scott. Have you got something awesome to cover the fact that I don't know what I'm doing right now? <laughs> well, I barely know what I'm doing on a daily basis, so uh, I'm in the same boat. We're going to take a look at the mayoral race here in Medicine Hat and still some early results, but right now it is Lindsay Clark that is leading the way. She's leading Mayor incumbent Ted Clugston by about 100 votes. Then there's uh, a pretty sharp drop off with Alan Rose, Tony Leahy, and Michael Starner following suit. As for the council candidates, a lot of incumbent are in this top eight that they're all fighting for. Robert Dumanowski is top right now with 188, followed by former Medicine Hat Police Chief Andy McGrogan. And then you see Darren Hirsch, Phil Turnbull, and Brian Varga in the top five as well. All three of them are looking for another mandate here on City Council, followed by Alison Knodel, Ramona Robbins, and Alison Van Dyke. Uh, Alison Van Dyke in that eighth spot with 105 votes. And then following that is Shyla Sharps, Cassie Heider, and Jim Black and Mandy Campbell, respectively, uh, with Shyla Sharps the next highest at 80 votes. So there's still plenty of time to go tonight. Uh, still lots of results to come in. All right, Scott Roblin, thank you very much. This just in, Tiffany Goodwin is at Earl's with Marco Jansen. Let's go to them now. Dan, I'm joined here by Marco Jansen. Marco, we heard a little bit of some of the early results. Were you shocked to find yourself towards the bottom? Not exactly. Uh, when you think to the last election, the cutoff for the number of votes to get a seat on council was somewhere in the order of 6,000. Uh, right now, we're only talking in the hundreds. So there's a lot of votes yet to be counted, and I'm quite comfortable with how the campaign went, that uh, the numbers will come up uh, as the evening goes on. Great. Now, there were a number of constraints uh, with COVID as to how to campaign. Are you confident that your message got out to the voters? I am. Uh, I had the pleasant experience over the past several days, and including today, of people coming up to me and saying, oh, you're Marco. They saw the big button that I had. Or I get messages uh, on my socials or on my email. People, I have no idea who they are, saying that they support me, they voted for me, and they're hoping I get on. Uh, a number of people that are reasonably well connected the community have said to me they're quite confident I'll, I'll get a seat by the end of the evening great and what are your plans for the rest of the night uh, try not to sweat too much make sure there's no food in my teeth when I go on camera and also just really enjoy the company uh, there are several candidates here we developed a really interesting camaraderie over the campaign we worked together we collaborated on outdoor meet and greet events because that's what we had to do and We've developed friendships, and friendships that I'm quite certain will continue beyond the election, regardless of the actual result. Yeah, can you maybe elaborate as to you know who you've started to become friends with because of this campaign? Um, several candidates, uh, Shyla Sharps, uh, Kelly Allard, uh, Allison Van Dyke, uh, Warren Pister, Brian Webster I've known for many, many years through our work with the Family Fun and Flight uh, Airport Day. Uh, I'm forgetting people, Roger, uh, Justin, it, it's just, there's so many to choose from. And I've had the pleasure of interactions with almost every one of them. And they've all been positive. It's really, it's different from other campaigns. This is my seventh campaign in nine years. Uh, most of them were at the provincial level where there's more animosity because there's party politics involved. We didn't see that here and that was really wonderful. 
Yeah, I was going to say, you know, what was it like, you know, being a candidate yourself? That was different. Uh, I have a lot of friends that uh, are in political circles, and we comment about how we've been in so many uh, campaigns. It's so much different when you're the candidate, because every decision finally comes to you, and you have to worry, is like, am I making the right choice or not? Great. Dan, back to you. All right, Tiffany Goodwin at Earl's with Marco Jansen. Thank you very much. Let's go back to Lisa Kowalczyk. Uh, anything you heard from Mr. Jansen that was uh, surprising for you, or does he sound like he's pretty much taking it in as things are going on? I think he's taking it in, and Marco has been a great personality throughout this this uh, campaign, and always a pleasure. He's been out to different community events, grand openings. I had the opportunity to connect with him at the Viner Centre grand reopening, and you know, a great sense of humor, very mm -hmm. personable. Um, you know, one of the, the lines he used or early on was, you know, Marco Polo, you don't have to find him, is Marco Jansen, and that was kind of a, uh, you know, I phrase. I asked you not to <laughs> use that line tonight. <laughs> I just have to, because he told me not to. Sure. It's live, the benefit of live TV. <laughs> um, but I think for a lot of the candidates, you know, it's, it's their first run at this. But again, you go back to the 2017 election, you had Councillor uh, Chris Samrosh, who ran in his very first election yeah. and came in second, um, just behind Robert du Dumanowski in the polls. So, you know, again, anything can happen. I think, you know, the best way to approach it is to just take things as they come and, and do what you can in terms of getting your name out there. And come election night, it's, yeah. it's really down to the polls and what the results show. Want to see some results? I do. Let's take a look at some of these results. All right. So we have some interesting boards to, to take a look at here. Okay. So when it comes to the mayoral race, Ted Clugston right now, the numbers have jumped. So Lindsay Clark is now up over 1,000, and Ted Clugston has less than half of what she has. Again, it's early. We're only about 30 minutes into the numbers coming in, and we do live in a city that has 63,000-plus people. But taking a look at these numbers, and Lindsay has more than done a great job during this campaign to prove that she deserves to be part of it but looking at these numbers anything can happen what's your first thought of looking at these numbers I think typically early poll results are you know as demonstrated in other elections again every level of government early poll results are a pretty good indicator of where we're gonna see you know the results at the end of the night but as you said I think Lindsay's run a really good campaign um, you know it's really tough to run against an incumbent mm -hmm. whether you know for mayor or on council and I think there's a lot of things that she has going for her, um, particularly being uh, a female candidate. It would be our first female mayor in the history of, of the city, and I think that has, you know, certainly has had people talking. I think the other piece of it, she's, she's young, she's vibrant, she's energetic, she's passionate about the city, um, and she's also, you know, worked within the city, mm -hmm. in the city solicitor's department. Having that legal background is certainly a benefit, particularly when you have to try to uh, decipher and, and figure out yeah. Uh, legalese and all the legal documents that are required by by a city I think having that uh, in your back pocket is certainly a benefit and I think you know the polls are showing that people are, are willing to give Lindsay a shot and and have a have a crack crack at the next four-year term if she does win her campaign is going to be one that people study and look at is there anything that that you think early is there anything that you think she did wrong during her campaign I think, you know, Lindsay was very authentic throughout the com campaign, and I think that's something that bodes well for any candidate. I think a lot of people can see through, um, mm -hmm. you know, whether there's, you know, that surface deep yeah. <laughs> um, rapport or, or persona. Um, and Lindsay has been very authentic and very, very much herself. But I, one of the things that does go unnoticed through campaigns is the teams that these candidates have behind them. Right. And it really does take a campaign team. I think a lot of people who run for uh, politics, there's different motives. Um, some are very much used to that environment, that political environment from other experience, but yeah. some have never experienced it, that before. And you're really trying to sell yourself and market yourself, and that's a whole different ballgame uh, compared to understanding governance, good government yeah. and legislation. And so having a good team behind, uh, behind any candidate mm -hmm. is important. It is important because when it comes to the interwebs, anything can happen there as well. Tegan Rosh is back with more on what's going on online. Tegan. Dan, we've seen the conversation growing on social media this evening. 
Many voters brought up campaigns, some preferring when a candidate had a website. It made it easier to find out where they stand on issues. Voters also seemed to appreciate when candidates were clear on their stances, especially when it came to COVID-19. When it comes to the topic of change and council, one voter says it means diversity and choosing candidates of different ages and backgrounds who can bring new opinions and ideas. Lastly, one voter who used the hashtag MHVote says it was their first time at the polls. Dan? All right, thank you very much. If you would like to use that hashtag, as Tegan said, it is MH votes. You can use that on Twitter or on Facebook. And if you want to find us on Facebook, look for Chat TV Medicine Hat on the social network. Time for another break. We're back with more as this program continues. Yes, it's election 2021 here on Chat Television. <laughs>